Yeah. All right, Coach. Um, you know, just talking with the players about, you know, the learning experience that, that you know, they're taking through this um, you know, period that they're going through. How do you, you know, what's something that you've sort of been able to familiarize with as far as what you've gone through versus something maybe that you dealt with as a, as a player or coach previously at Marion? Um, Ethan, I don't think I've ever lost seven games in a row, so okay. uh, no experience Sorry. in that regard. Um, well, maybe I, just I think, the... well, I think a lot of our kids haven't experienced that, um, so it's new territory for everybody. But I think I've said it last week, the best thing about this group is, like, they still believe, they still fight every day, they still work their tails off for us. Um, and I know we, like, it didn't translate to a win at Nebraska, we lose by 14 points, but... We played better. We didn't shoot it well. We didn't make open shots. Um, defensively, we flew around a little bit more. We got better looks. Um, and if, if you watch our practices, like we're getting better. It's not translating to wins, but um, as long as we can continue on that course and focus on that, then hopefully February is a new month for us and uh, we can figure something out how to win. I guess to extrapolate, just just the last point from, from that is, you know, maybe some adversity that, that you experience in your past and how you know, I mean life's you know. hard right like it you know like life can be hard and it can knock you on your feet but like I don't, you, you got to keep getting up and fighting and that's that's what our group is doing like yeah we've been knocked down but we've gotten up and we fought like seven times in a row we're standing up eight um and you know they they, they they're great in film they're great on the court they're coachable um they're connected as a unit uh and we just we're just searching for a win and um, you know, I think we're, obviously we're all tired of losing, um, but I think you'll see a group for the month of February that will continue to fight um, and, and try to play basketball the right way with each other. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, um, we can get back to protecting our home floor um, and figure this thing out on Monday. You've mentioned that you are seeing improvement yeah. in, in areas. Just what are some of those areas? And it, it could be just the littlest things that you've made improvement, yeah, improvements like, um, on. Yeah, like our understanding of when, when and how to double the post players better. Obviously, we don't have a shot blocker, so we, we do want to double the post quite often. Um, our rotations out of it are better. Um, you know, I, I, I think back to when we played against Indiana, we doubled Holmes. We didn't rotate well, and they got clean looks a couple yeah. times. Now against Nebraska, when we went to double, we rotated well. Um, you know, shot into the, we're, we're down eight, we get a great rotation, <laughs> shot clock is going off, it bounces and touches, I think, the top of the ceiling and falls back in the rim. But, like, that kind of stuff we're understanding. Um, offensively, we're still playing pretty selfless, like we're making the extra pass. I thought we got in the paint, um, followed the game plan, got in the paint and kicked the shooters. We just, I mean, what, we four for 21. We just missed a lot of open shots. And sometimes that's basketball and sometimes that life, that's life. It's hard. You, you keep battling, you, you keep pushing through and trying to persevere, and um, it's going to go our way one of these days. Just uh, Sophia tweaked her ankle yeah. in Nebraska. she be fine for Monday, or do you know um, I think it's going to be a game-time decision. Uh, oh. I think yes, yesterday was pretty rough uh, for her, um, so it's just a matter of getting the swelling out and seeing how she can handle it. Um, I, she's a tough kid, and you know we don't play today. We play tomorrow, so maybe right. another day will we'll allow her to, to, to be on the court for us. Just with Illinois, yeah. um, you know, they came in with a lot of expectations because yeah. everybody come back. They seem to have straightened themselves out just yeah. a little bit. What have, what have you seen from them here recently that uh, um, puts them in that position? I think just looking a little bit more confident in who they are on the offensive end. Um, yeah, they, well, they, they've won two in a row now. Um, big win at Michigan coming off that one. Um, and then the comeback win against Minnesota at home. Makaira Cook and Bryant, like they can really, really get it going. Um, got two bigs inside that can just flat out dominate and rebound, rebound a ball. Uh, but when Cook and Bryant look confident, their team is just different. Um, so obviously we got our hands full with with those two kids who can just flat out cook and and score the basketball. Um, for us, like it's just staying confident and, and believing in what we're trying to do. Um, you know, I think. You know, there's some things that we can do, and I know there's some things that Illinois can do against us, but it's our home floor, and we got to find a way to protect it again. Coach, um, I think Peyton game is coming up. Yeah. Um, who do you think about the first person that maybe comes to your yeah. mind when you think about, you know, that game and the, and the struggles that? Yeah. You know? um, 
honestly, the, the person I think about the most is, is Beth Kuchar. Uh, you know, she's she's like my right hand man the last two years here. Um, and uh, I knew she battled it. I didn't know her, but when she was battling it, uh, when she was coaching in Butler, um, and, then, and then to work alongside her the last, you know, two years ago and uh, become really, really good friends with her. Um, and then the last two moments of, you know, the last two pink games we've had, um, ha you know, having her by my side and just talking and reminiscing that through that, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, she, she was my associate head coach for two years, but became my best friend. So, um, you know, she's my ride or die. Any chance she'll be here Monday? No, she won't. She was here <laughs> earlier. Uh, she came in December. Um, she was here for a Notre Dame game, and right. she's uh, she's retired playing golf <laughs> almost every day. I think she's living a life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so Coach, you've been uh, you used to go cheese after. Go after, cheese. after so I want to know. Explain the fandom behind it. How'd you yeah. become such a deep cheese fan and uh, who are your top five players? Ooh, long story. Um, it, not a long story. Andy yeah. Reid. Andy Reid is the why, I, why I'm a Chiefs fan. Um, always loved the way he coached his Eagles team. Was a diehard Peyton Manning fan when he was here. Got traded to the Broncos. Became a Broncos fan because I was a Peyton Manning fan. He retired. Uh, didn't really have a team. I, I followed Drew, uh, obviously, with the Saints. Uh, but because of, I always liked Andy, um, back to his Eagles with Donovan McNabb and all that, but um, you just kind of, you watch his guys, you know, respond to him, and it's kind of the way I want to coach. He's always calm. He's pretty, you know, he, he gets fired up when, when he needs to, but it's <clears throat> the way his guys just look at him and respect him um, is probably the, the biggest reason uh, why I'm a Chiefs fan. Obviously, it helps. George is number one uh, on my all-time favorite Chiefs. <laughs> Um, obviously, you gotta love Pat and, and, and Kelsey um, for what they've done for for the program, but or yeah, for the the, the Chiefs in general. Um, man, all time, I don't know. Like, I I loved Honey Badger when when you know when when he was there, but I've become a really big uh, Trent McDuffie fan um, and Sneed. I don't know that there's a better one-two punch in the back in the in the backfield and secondary. Um, Pacheco is a is another one. Uh, he actually dated Laisha, so when Laisha was on our team last year, they dated when they were at Rutgers. So, um, so became a big pop fan. Um, I like the Jet McKinnon. Obviously, he's he's coming back, but uh, George is number one. Chris Jones has been a massive. You know, I hope we can figure out a way to sign him. I think they're gonna give him like, I think they said like ninety million dollars over three years. So I don't know if we can afford him, but. Uh, Keep don't go down list. Derek Thomas, um, Harrison Bucker is a stud. Tommy Townsend is a stud. Um, but it all goes back to, to Andy Reid. What things have you picked up anything from Andy? I mean, you coach different sport, different sport. But have you picked it's up how, anything? How you be a leader? Yeah. Um, I think you watch. I think there's an interview a couple weeks ago. Somebody asked Patrick Mahomes about uh, if Andy gets fired up, and he said something about after they won the Super Bowl was the most passionate right. emotion he saw. And he, and he says like, no, he's just always calm. Like, you know, he's he's never rattled. He's, he he approaches every day the same way. Um, and I, I think that's what I try to be on the sidelines. Sometimes I can get fired up um, and whatnot, but. Um, I think when you, as a head coach, sometimes you got to be a duck on the pond, right? Like your head above water, not moving, and nobody's got to see what's going on under the water. Because if you if you are like that, then your team can mimic uh, the calmness. So I think that's what I see. Coach, um, I think Abby and uh, Janaire are approaching a thousand mm -hmm. points for for their career. Um, you know, knowing that, that that they were transfers, the first two transfers to reach that thousand point pedestal. Um, what have they meant to this program and the building yeah. moving forward? Um, I think for me, it's personally, they're, um, and, and you can really throw Madison and Jayla into that mix, uh, but JT and Abby, they didn't know me from Adam. You know, I came from an NAI school, and nobody thinks or thought, and probably still thinks I should have this job. Um, but in talking to them and, and winning them over and winning their families over, they believed in, in the vision of what we were trying to do. Obviously, the opportunity to play was here, and I think that's always appealing to, to transfers. Um, but I wasn't supposed to be their coach for the first year, and 40 days before it all happens, 
They didn't turn their back on me. They believed in what I was saying, um, believed in what we were preaching. And the first year was up and down, but we found a way to get to the WNIT. The next year they come back, we find a way to get to the NCAA tournament. You know, this year hasn't gone the way we, we thought it would, um, but they still fight and believe um, in, in, in what we are and, and who I am and, and what Purdue is about, um, and, and that's their legacy.